All righty, we now transition to the NBA, and we welcome in Coach Nick of B-Ball Breakdown. Hello, Coach. How are you, sir? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Are we going to talk about sports, or should we should do more, you know, Halloween candy? Uh, why don't you leave the antics to our show? Okay. <laughs> what is your thank you? What is your favorite Halloween candy? Go ahead. Oh, well, it's candy corn, you have the right take. It's terrible. I hate it. If, it. if it doesn't have chocolate, it ain't worth it. So I'm going to go with uh, Come Snickers. Come on, coach. Me. Hey, I'm, I'm going with Snickers for the uh, the peanut, the people who aren't allergic to peanuts. So that's the way to go, oh. the little ones. Always, always thinking about those that can't even handle some of the great things in life. Good for you. Okay, so uh, Jimmy Butler, do we have this video, by the way? Do we have it, Jimmy? Fantastic. So. Jimmy Butler, as we certainly do know, we don't have it, hallelujah. Okay, so Jimmy Butler, as we certainly do know, uh, wants out of Minnesota. Here is some of what he said, or at least some of what was reported via The Athletic. Three days before the start of the regular season, Taylor, as in the owner, met with his disgruntled all-star before practice, searching for some sort of understanding to calm the noise that has drowned out any sense of excitement for the upcoming season. In the meeting, Taylor and Butler came to an agreement, sources said. Taylor will continue to work diligently to find a trade as soon as possible. Until that happens, Butler will be a good teammate and play as hard as he always does. With trade talks whisper quiet at this point, neither side has much of a choice. Then Jimmy said on the record, they want me to go out here and hoop to the best of my abilities. And then carrying on, make sure I'm healthy, compete, because that's what I love to do. Go up against the best, because that's what I love to do. And do it for the guys that's in the same jersey as me. So your reaction to this is what, coach? You know, that that's all nice and good stuff to say. You know, and I, I think the, the teammates responded okay to it. So um, I, I do feel like when you have outbursts, when he's yelling at the at the owner, it's not always a great look. But I don't think that that's an issue. We, we've seen that a lot in other games and other teams in the past. Uh, and I think that the only way you'd want to deal with it other than, you know, letting him express himself is to, you know, maybe talk to him one-on-one -on -one later, um, you know, after practice. But certainly, um, you know, if you'd want a player to come out on your team, and compete hard. No, this is what you want. So uh, it, it's it's kind of like a, a non-story to me to some degree. The only story I, I think out of this is, is w will he get traded and can they get a deal going? But other than that, this is just you know regular stuff that happens in any team. Now, how do you coach or communicate with a player who seems uncoachable and then also is being perceived as the media as like this villain, but is owning it to to his right mind? Like, how do you communicate with a player like that and still get through to him? Well, you know, it's a great question because I think in the past when we've had a player who, you know, is is angry or upset, doesn't want to practice hard, which is not what Butler is, but like those kind of uh, issues, I think the old school version would have been you're going to get in his face and you're going to scream and yell and you're going to make his life miserable until he somehow comes to Jesus and sees the right way. But in all honesty, when you look at this from a scientific standpoint, a psychological standpoint, that's the last thing you want to do. Right, you want to be able to have a sit down man to man and just in a very rational way, just describe like what do you want from this team? What can we do to help you get that goal? And you know, that's what you want to get on track and be on the same page. And I think that Tom Thibodeau would, would take that track. Certainly, he knows Jimmy Butler long enough and has a good enough relationship where he could do that. Although this is the other problem that we're going to start seeing less and less of. We're not going to see as many coach GMs anymore because this is a two this kind of two way hat or whatever you're wearing it isn't going to work when you have that kind of conversation. And coach, lastly on this subject, in your opinion, at least in my own opinion, let me preface it with this. I have seen a great depreciation for Carl Anthony Towns because of all of this that has occurred. We were talking and GMs were even surveyed two years ago, maybe, maybe going into last season. If you had to start your team with any player, who would it be? It was Carl Anthony Towns when he got his extension and was offered the extension or was there were rumblings about the extension uh, possibly being offered to him. Everyone said he's absolutely worth the money. Yet now that all of this has come out with Jimmy Butler, it seems like his value has been decreased greatly even though he is going to get this humongous contract kicking in very soon. Him and Andrew Wiggins are gonna account for like over $220 million on the Timberwolves' payroll. Is this just the Jimmy effect and this entire Jimmy saga that has plagued the stock of Cat with many NBA fans? Well, you have to be careful about exactly what has stirred this up in Jimmy because remember, they had a big increase in wins last year. They made the playoffs for the first time. So it's weird that you say that this is a, a terrible situation. They're on their way. 
Uh, so you have to figure out exactly who Jimmy is really talking about. If you look at Cat's stats, it's hard to argue. I mean, the guy's got fills up the box score like almost like no other player at his position. So that is an issue. However, we do know how seriously Jimmy Butler takes defense, and that is a serious problem for Butler for uh, Wig. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm getting my order wrong <laughs> for uh, for Towns. However, a lot of the Towns stuff, while it might be a little bit of uh, effort, but not that much. To me, it's more about the way he trains, the way the strength of his legs, things that he would need a whole offseason to repair, and probably doesn't even know what he needs to do because clearly he hasn't addressed those things even into this year. So that's the problem where he might be really, uh, Carl Anthony Towns could be frustrated himself that he's not a better defensive player. And it's gonna take physical training to, to fix the way his knees work and his biomechanics before he can get to a, a better elite player. Now that said, he does so well on the offensive end, it kind of you know mitigates some of the defensive stuff. So um, I think that people still feel like uh, Towns is a great player and he, and he is, but his defensive shortcomings are, are a serious issue and would certainly be wanted Butler. You know what's my favorite song? You can ring my bell. So do it, why don't you? Ring the damn bell and download the TYT app. Available on Android and iOS.